Well, this is by far the most unique bike we've tested. In fact, it's a trike. But can your e-bike do this? Whoop, going backwards. Yes, there is a reverse on this bike, which is awesome. But does that make it any good? Keep on watching to find out more. And go. Woo! All right, the Rad Trike is the newest e-bike from Rad Power Bikes. It has a 750 watt front motor, but of course the most unique thing is it's got three wheels. This allows it to be much more difficult to tip. It also allows it to be incredibly easy for anyone to get on, anyone with any mobility issues whatsoever. And it's just a fun little bike that is right for the right person. But is that you? Let me walk through some more of the features and what makes this e-bike unique and you can make the decision from there. So I originally wanted to try out the trike because it turns out my wife is a very bad cyclist. She's just not very good. She doesn't really care to ride a bike because she's worried she's always going to tip it over. And with e-bikes, they're very heavy. In fact, this is probably one of the heaviest e-bikes we've tested, but of course, a lot more difficult to tip over. Sure, you can tip it over, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, it's got a couple of unique little features here. Obviously, it has the front twist throttle, so it'll go there. It has just one brake in the front. I'm gonna talk about the motor here in just a second, but the motor is up front and it's 750 watts. It's got a tiny little bell and then a nice little screen here that looks a lot like the Rad Rover 6 Plus um, with the exception of missing the other screen that shows you things like your trip, um, your speed, that sort of thing. It does not come with this rear rack. I actually added this rear rack extra comes in this one kind of cool gray color. I like it kind of greenish gray. And uh, let's go take it for a spin. I'll tell you what I think. I'll tell you some of the interesting, unique things about this e-bike. But one of the most interesting things that I think you saw earlier is it can actually go in reverse. You simply hold down this reverse button and it will go in reverse, which is awesome. If you think about someone that needs this for mobility issues, right? They're gonna need to back up at times and not need not want to have to hold onto the bike when they do it. So that's a great addition. I love that Rad Power Bike seems to think about everything uh, when they're making these bikes. And this is one of the most unique designs. And in fact, it was a little bit unique even to put together. Here, check this out of me putting it together. It didn't take, you know, anything crazy to put together, but it was just a little bit unique because it comes in this square box and you're like, what the heck is this? And it turns into this. So. Let's go take this for a quick ride here. I will tell you exactly what I'm experiencing and let's rock and roll. All right, so one of the first things you're gonna notice about this is it's incredibly easy to get on. I mean, look, you just kind of step on like that. No problem whatsoever. This is the parking great break. If you have this orange tab, pulled in and this pulled in, you can get the parking brake and it won't move at all. Simply hit that button to release it. I'm in pedal assist level five and uh, there is no miles per hour or range or odometer on this little computer. That's okay. I'll be able to tell you how fast I'm going here in just a second, but let me go just go take us around and show you what it, how it, how it rides. So it is a little bit of a different sensation because you're being pulled versus being pushed from the back. The front motor, once again, is in the very front, obviously just one motor for one wheel and uh, it doesn't have any motors or brakes on the back. Once again, there is no gears. Um, it is just point it and go. The weird thing and the most unique thing about this e-bike is actually when you take a turn, you're gonna feel the need to turn and lean in the opposite direction of your, lean in the same direction of your turn, because it does feel like the bike is going to tip, not from, not that it's actually gonna tip, but what it's actually doing is you're feeling it being pulling you versus you being pushed with a back rear motor. Whoa, 
it's getting windy here, a little crazy. And so you'll feel this most during the turns, uh, this sensation of being pulled versus being pushed with the rear hub. Whoa, and I'm being pushed by the wind, it's a little crazy. And so you can see it does take a little bit to get up and going, there are no gears, but I'm able to go at a leisurely pace here without any problem whatsoever. Whew. Let me try and uh, get an exact mile per hour figure on here and we can see how it goes. Start bike out, bicycle outside workout. Starting your workout. All right, now this will give me a little bit of an average mile an hour check. Let's let's go test this out real quick. Let's go. Whoa, I just peeled out. I didn't even know I could do that. Woo! We're going 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 2.3, 4. That's pretty crazy. I didn't even know I could uh, I could do that. That's pretty funny. Woohoo! I'm going. How fast is it going? It's average is 7.7. .7. Says the top speed is 20 miles an hour. This is a 750 watt motor. Whoa! This car coming around. I'm definitely not going 20 miles an hour. I can tell you that right now. Woo! Once again, you're going to feel the need to lean into these current turns, especially when you have the motor engaged. It just feels a little bit different than, than it normally would. Woo. Woo. Now I don't even know if I'm doing the right sit. I probably can have the seat up a little bit higher. It does have this nice backrest that's on here, but uh, you can see it's just a little bit like, a, I don't know, it's very stable, but it's a little wobbly because all the power is coming from that front wheel, which is okay, but it just, Take something that's a little bit getting used to. And there's only one brake uh -huh, on one side, which means you need both hands free at all times, which they probably would recommend doing that anyway. Huh. It's pretty interesting. Very different sensation. Very odd to not have any gears whatsoever. And to get this like pulling feeling as you're going, you know, up. It's pretty interesting. It does have a max payload of, I think it's 440 pounds. Maybe it's just 400 pounds. I'll put the exact specs on it, which means you can put a lot of stuff in the back if you need to. You know, there's a rickshaw that's coming out from that company I really want to try so the kids can go in the back seat, which is pretty cool. I like that a lot. Um, and so you're gonna have to kind of use your pedal assist levels on a bike like this, um, kind of like you would gears, right? So. I may need to be up in a higher gear to make it up this hill, make sure there's no one coming. And let's just take this up for a ride here. Oh man, no problem whatsoever. It's actually, it actually almost feels a little bit easier to be going up a hill in a bike like this because you are being pulled once again. It's not that, that push feeling that you find in most rear hub motors. That motor is up front and you know what? It might be a little bit loose, actually. Might have to go take this back in and, and check it out. So it does turn out that my wheel actually need to be replaced. I reached out to Rad Power Bikes. They offered to send VeloFix in to go and fix it. But I thought it'd be good for me to learn how to fix it myself. And guess what? I still called VeloFix to have them come and make sure, those are my kids, not the mechanic, to make sure they did it correctly. And it turns out that I did. So I fixed it. It had some loose bearings, I think, maybe in it. And once again, Rad Power Bikes was super easy to deal with. They offered to send over a bike mechanic. I want to try it out myself. And you know what? You can change the wheel by yourself. It's not that hard. But once again, I always recommend getting someone like VeloFix to check out work, especially on something that's as important as your front motor. Now let's get back to our review. Let me give you just a real quick tour of this bike before I take off here. First of all, this is part of my recording equipment that is not part of the bike. It's got a very simple layout, as you can see here. It's got the very simple controller that's right there. 
and it has the different pedal assist levels up down it also has a nice brake which is like a parking brake uh, up here where you can hold this button down and it will actually lock the bike in place you kind of see it there it's that orange tab you pull it back in it snaps off but this is nice because the bike will roll if you do not have it uh, fully secured so it's hard to film and put the lock on at the same time but uh, it's got a half twist throttle that's right here. Obviously, if the brake is engaged, it will not work. And then it's got a fold down handle. This handle actually folds down. Here is the bike battery that's down here. It's got a nice little indicator of how good the battery is there. Turnkey ignition, obviously. It's got uh, no gears. That's another interesting thing to think about this bike. There is no gears. It actually goes down here. And then um, the power to the motor is up in front. So once again, here's the battery. The it has one brake up in front and one motor up in front. It does have just regular mechanical disc brakes. I do wish that it had uh, full hydraulic disc brakes, but I don't know what the consequences of that are. It's also got a nice big bright uh, light up front that is turned off right now because obviously it's sunny outside. Once again, this does fold down and it's relatively heavy. I'll put the exact weight on here below, but it's not a big deal this heavy because you get to ride it and you don't have to lug it around like you would some of the other e-bikes we've tested. So you can assemble this yourself, no problem whatsoever. Um, once I always tell people, you know, if you're looking at an e-bike, make sure to get it checked out after you put it together by someone that knows what they're doing. And by knowing what they're doing, I mean someone that puts together a lot of different bikes and knows all the different intricacies of them, of them all. So, whew. and that's where you just feel like it's a little bit of a different sensation is when you have to make like that kind of quick turn like that. Not even a quick turn, but kind of a quick movement. It's just kind of a weird, different sensation that I'm not quite used to. Um, but once again, not a problem whatsoever. Yeah, once again, it's kind of weird not having those, that motor in the back. Once again, it just kind of feels like you're being pushed. And this is kind of like what I was saying. Like that kind of stuff just feels a little bit different than what you're used to. Once again, not a super bad thing. Not a, you know, good thing either. It's like a little bit of like, yeah, because you're just going, you're, everything is being pushed. I mean, pulled kind of through that front wheel. And so when you move the front wheel and it's going, it feels a little bit different. Obviously you don't need to drive like that all the time. I wouldn't recommend driving like that at all actually, but you can kind of see, yeah, it's just kind of when the front wheel is going, you're going to go with it. It's going to go wherever you point it, which is what it's designed to do, right? All right, let me give you a couple of final thoughts here after I had the front wheel fixed. It really didn't make that big of a difference. It's just a different sensation riding with a front hub motor than the rear hub motors like most of the other ones. And this bike is really best for people that are not super steady on a regular bike. E-bikes are super heavy. And if you have any sort of mobility issues whatsoever, check out a trike. I've got some other trikes that I am testing out right now. And they all feel very similar in terms of that pull that is not unique to rad power bikes. It just takes, you know, one or two rides. And granted, I push it a little bit more than someone that has mobility issues would do. So check it out, take it for a ride, and you're going to love it because it's easy to get on, easy to get off, and you're not going to worry about falling. It's super fun to ride and a great addition, especially if you're worried about tipping over a bike. Most e-bikes are super heavy, and if you have any sort of mobility issues whatsoever, balancing a heavy bike is not easy. Even just moving around to park it, it's not easy. So I recommend you check out this rad trike. And for me, here's how I'm gonna use it, probably the most. All right, what's the number one thing I think this bike would be really good for is being able to uh, go to the pool with the kids, go run some quick errands. But the number one thing that I'm going to use the seat bike for, at least I can see people using the seat bike for, is 
pretty simple. It's this. Checking the mail.